courtesy show sunrise Remember those summers down at the ocean The smile of a child as she looks you in the eye The sound of a stream through the deep forest pine Everything's beautiful and you It's been forever since you've been gone But I'm trying to carry on Where you been, baby? Everyone's looking for you Walking, breathing, talking The miracle of love Gazing into your baby's eyes You speak a thousand words and I say in one The smell of the autumn woods Overcoming previous loss Accepting everything's beautiful and you Forever since you've been gone But I'll try to carry on Where you've been, sweetie Everyone's looking for you Whoa, what if I change? What if you do too? What if I wake up tomorrow With no thoughts of today? Day, day, day But I wait for you all my life And oh, 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 no uh What if you do too? What if I wake up tomorrow with no thoughts of today? Day, day, day. And it hurts me. Thank you. 
two nights left y'all two nights before we get rid of this year um so thanks for tuning in for our second to last poor house trivia online of 2020 um so let's go ahead and get the game started by inviting y'all to subscribe if you're not subscribed yet please do so if you enjoy the game it's a wonderful way for us to keep in touch with you and all of you that have subscribed all 2026 of you i think it was the last time i checked um we appreciate it if you want to subscribe to the channel hit the subscribe button it's totally free click the bell receive all notifications you'll never miss anything we do on into 2021 um all right so if you're new to the game all you got to do to play is just be here hang out enjoy yourself scream answers at the screen if you like give yourself one point a piece and have some fun another way to play is a poor house trivia scoring format it's a little more formal a little more uh uh, competitive you can compete against the other teams that are using it and we will be collecting your scores and posting a leaderboard right below me right there later on in the game so if you want to choose that route you want to sign in your team name with our moderator ian who is in chat right now with his partner who's a robot Streamlabs, um and go ahead and sign in those team names now using that url with the google forms all right you also want to download the interactive score sheet, which you can find at poorhousetrivia.com. Right click it, save it, and open it with Adobe. It'll look a little something like that. Okay, here's the rules. Here's how you play the game. If you've never played, welcome to our channel. Thank you so much. If you have played, well, you've heard me say this before, but here's how you play the game. There's four rounds, five questions per round. I ask them, you answer them, and then once you have answered the question with your team, you decide how confident you are in your answer um then you click a wager that's how you earn points one three five seven or nine are your choices nine is the highest level of confidence one is very low confidence okay and you can only use each number once per round so there's five questions in round one and there's five possible wagers you may use them all once and only once 
So you can't just spam the nine every single time. Okay. That's it. Four rounds, five questions I ask. You answer. Click a wager. You're good to go. There's a few bonuses, which I will go over as they pop up. Your first challenge starts now. Write these categories down where it says category, team captains. We've got New Year's Eve celebrations that are not in Times Square. Popularity, pre. I was actually going to call every single thing in this round something pre, like East pre. <laughs> Uh, U.S. State Puri, and then Poker Puri. So go ahead, write those categories down. Here's your first challenge. With your teammates, decide what you think your best category is out of those five, and then click the little plus five on the answer sheet if you're competing in the Poor House Trivia Scoring format. Click the plus five to indicate that's your best category or your favorite category. If you get it right, you'll get five points added to your score automatically in addition to all the other points you earn. So take about 30 seconds, decide one category, click plus five, and we'll get going with it. Oh, this is a new jam. Changing the light there on myself. That's bright. And that's orange. Ah, whatever. There we go. We're going to go mysterious and orange tonight. All right, y'all. Good luck, everybody. We're going to go ahead and get started. Um, I want to remind you of one very important thing. I don't think I can deal with orange and mysterious. Um, I think I'd rather be uh, glary. I think I'd rather glisten. All right, y'all. Here's how you play. Um, no, that I told you that. Uh, what I want to do is remind you of a role, the honor system role. That's a very important role. Um, please abide by it. Do not use anything to obtain answers except for your own brain. No Googling, no nothing. Challenge yourself to have a good time and be on the up and up. No changing answers also once I've revealed them, obviously. So, uh, And it's a lot more fun that way, I promise. Good luck. That said, here we go. New Year's Eve celebrations. Due to its proximity in the Southern Hemisphere, this Southern America, South American city normally hosts millions of New Year's Eve guests in the warm weather on the Copacabana Beach. For you wager, please give me the name of that South American city. Once again, due to its proximity uh, in the Southern Hemisphere, this South American city normally hosts millions of New Year's Eve guests in the warm weather on the Copacabana Beach. If you wager, please give me the name of that South American city. 25 seconds, y'all. I like this jam. I like this jam. This is a new one. All right, y'all. Lock this answer in. We're going to bring it home. All right, we're bringing it home. This is called New Year's Eve other than New York City. Uh, that city, the Copacabana, is Rio de Janeiro. At the Copa, we fell in love. All right, y'all. 
Question number two, popular puree. One, a former U.S. president, and the other, a male musician. Name other, name either one of the two people who have the most followers on Twitter, 2020. You can guess it either. Two points for both. Name either of the two most uh, people with the most followers on Twitter, 2020. One's a U.S. former U.S. president. The other one is a musician, male. Who could it be? Maybe you get their tweets. Who knows? One is a former U.S. president. The other is a male musician. These two people are the people who have the most followers on Twitter. 2020. Name either for your wager. You can get both of them. You get a two-point bonus. Maybe you follow them. Chances are that you might, as popular as they are, 15 seconds to lock in. All right, y'all, the answer we're looking for, the two most popular people on Twitter with a boatload of Twitter uh, followers. Uh, I don't know the number, but they are former U.S. President Barack Obama, or I guess they are they are still U.S. President, but not a former active U.S. President Barack Obama, and the Biebs. So Bieber and Obama. The two most uh, Twitter-followed people ever. <laughs> All right. Question number three is East. This is a three-part question. Each of your answers will begin with the word East. Two for you, wager. All three for two points. Four, four seasons. Danny McBride starred as washed up ball player Kenny Powers on this HBO comedy. Number two, title of the John Steinbeck novel, which was later adapted into a James Dean film. And number three, this is the former name of the current nation of Bangladesh. Remember, each answer begins with the word East, and you need two for your wager, three for two points bonus. Uh oh, Crooks is making attacks on the Beebs. Again, y'all, for four seasons, Danny McBride starred as washed-up ball player Kenny Powers on this HBO comedy. Number two, the title of a John Steinbeck novel, which was later adapted into a James Dean film. And number three, this is the former name of the current nation of Bangladesh. You've got 20 seconds to lock it in, pop it in, do your thing, jingle-lang. All right, let's talk about it, y'all. East. East is your answer. Number one. Go ahead and lock them in, y'all. Lock them in. Number one. That is Eastbound and Down. Never seen an episode. Can't comment. Don't know anything about it. I've heard about it. Sure, it's good. If you like it, sweet. Um, 
Number two, that is east of Eden. East of Eden. And number three is East Pakistan, uh, former Bangladesh. I had a friend of mine in college that was uh, from Bangladesh. And I remember he would have me over his house and uh, the eating rituals. I don't know how they're flying in COVID because everybody used just hands. We'd slop up stuff. We'd put it on our plate. And, I, you know, I, I didn't want to express too much reservation about that at the time. This was the late 90s, so there was no COVID. Uh, but even then, like, <laughs> I felt weird about it. You know, But they're like, no, 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 just dig in. Just slop it in and slop it in. You take a big piece of bread, you eat it, and you dip it and triple dip and triple slop. It's pretty crazy stuff. <laughs> you ever had a nice real Bengali meal? That's how they do it. They are all up in each other's business. That is for sure. All right. U.S. states. For you, Adrian, what U.S. state would one find Lake Okeechobee, the second largest freshwater lake contained entirely within the contiguous 48 United States? Again, for you, Adrian, what U.S. state would one find Lake Okeechobee, the second largest freshwater lake contained entirely within the contiguous 48 United States of America? Of America. Go ahead. Tell me what you think. All right, y'all, lock this one in. 20 seconds. Lake Okeechobee. All righty, lock it in. Lake Okeechobee, the second largest freshwater lake contained entirely within the United States. Uh, the answer we're looking for, that state is... Florida. There it is. That was our hint of the day. If you are on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, email newsletter, we give a hint every day to a question. Each night we do trivia online and live. Florida was tonight's answer. Final question is Poker Paris. At the World Series of Poker in Vegas, one of the events is known as Horse, which, a mixed, which is a mixed game comprised of other games. Each letter in the word horse stands for a different game of poker at which the players compete. Be wager, tell me what any two of those letters stand for. And for a two points bonus, get four. You don't have to get all of them. Just get four of them for a two points bonus. And here's a killer. You might, you can guess it all five. So there's an event called horse. Each of the letters in the word horse stands for an individual game of poker. For this, you need to name two of those letter games. The two games that start with those letters. If you can get four of them, you get two points bonus. One more time at the World Series of Poker, one of the events is called Horse, where uh, it's a mixed game comprised of other games. Each letter in the word horse stands for a different game of poker at which the players compete. For you, wager, tell me what any two of those letters in horse stand for. And for two points, name four of them. You can guess it all five, and you have 20 seconds to do this.
All right, lock them in, y'all. Poker it is. We're talking about the game of horse in poker. Each letter stands for a different poker game. Uh, they are Hold'em, Omaha, Raz, Stud, and Eight or Better. If you got any two of those, you're good to go. If you got four of them, click your plus two. If you got five of them, let me know in chat. You get a chat brag. Open it up. That's the end of round one, y'all. Make sure everything is clicked correctly, Team Captain. We're going to move on into round number two. But first, I would like to thank you all, as always, for your love and support all year long, both in subscribing to the channel as well as the old virtual tip jar. If you feel the urge tonight, that is how you do it right on the screen right there, poorhousetrivia.online slash tip, or you can use their camera and go to the QR code. It takes you right to the tip page. There's also a merch link up top if you're interested uh, in any Poor House trivia uh, hoodies, T-shirts, hats, all that stuff. It's a uh, fine way to support as well. We are very grateful. Thank you for your virtual coinage into the tip jar. And uh, yes, that's how you do it. So uh, last night we had a, a lot of kind folks. So I would like to thank all of them. A lot of sacks. Boom, shrapnack, alaka, uh, Burks, Fool's Gold, Cell Phony, Baloney, CO68, Crumb Boa, uh, Elizabeth Lopez, 702, Emmett Otters, Meat Packers, Gabby Gertie, Hardboard Eggs and Nuts, I Like to Eat Sandwiches, and Jenny, thank you so much for your tips, as well as KM Riley 5, Lion Hearts, MT, Enrib0823, Flu Fighters, and Zero Dot gender y'all are amazing appreciate you so so much here's the categories for round number two let's kick it right off uh uh here's to old lang sign did i say that wrong <laughs> historical names animated characters scientists and literary first lines Old Lang Sign. What's up, Lion Hearts? Thank you all for opening up the tip jar. Appreciate you so much. Uh, Crooksy. Yes, Crooksy, tomorrow night is all 2020 themed. It will be general knowledge. We'll hit a bunch of different topics, uh, you know, but we will we will have a thread of 2020-ness in it. All right, y'all, good luck. Round two is kicking off. Here we go. For this three-part question, each of your answers can be derived from the phrase Ald Lang Syne. You may guess that all three. I don't think I've ever said that word. I've seen it a million times. I never pronounce it. So if I'm butchering it, let me know. I looks like it wasn't too bad. Um, all right, you can guess that all three. If you need if you two correct, you're good. All three, two points bonus. No, you do not have to use all the letters in the phrase for your answer. Okay. Um the Virginia town where you can find the CIA headquarters. Number two. These sets of flowers include petunias, marigolds, zinnias, and impatiens. That's one of my... Um, is my 2021 goal is to be less impatience. This guy, this guy. I'm going to get a hook. I, that's for 21. I'm going to get some props. I told you I'm going to become a prop comic here in 2021. Oh my God, I'm of a, a hook. Well, you can't do it that way, can you? Wait, see, now I'm all messed up. The winter sport, this winter sports holds the record for the shortest word to have won the script's spelling bee.
once again, the Virginia town where you can find the CIA headquarters. Number two, a uh, set of flowers include petunias, marigolds, zinnias, and impatiens. Number three, this winter sport holds the record for the shortest word to have won the script's spelling bee. You got 20 seconds to lock in. Alrighty, here is your answers. Or here are your answers. Number one is Langley. Number two, annuals, annuals. And number three is the loogie. No, 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 loogie is something different. That's not a winter sport uh, yet. Uh, it's the luge, the luge. I think Loogie should be a winter sport, though, if you want to know my opinion. But enough about that. Historical names. On December 30th, 1922, this man proclaimed the establishment of the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, USSR, which would remain in place for almost seven decades. For your wager, please give me the name of that man. One more time, but first I'd like to thank Hippies and Honeys for that amazing uh, donation. Thank you very much, Hippies and Honeys. They say, don't stop now. Sounds good. What's up, Jaxman Joe? Says, for the Jinx Snacks. Awesome, man. Thank you so much. Uh, on December 30th, 1922, that would be uh, today, uh, actually, um, years ago. This man... Proclaimed the establishment of Uni Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, the USSR, which would remain in place for almost seven decades. Name that man, 20 seconds. That's 98 years ago. Is that right? 98? your answer y'all go ahead and lock it in magruder the 241 is in the hizzle tonight what's up y'all thank you very very much all year for your support they say to quote colonel potter here's to the new year maybe she'd be a damn sight better than the old one i'll drink to that cheers to colonel potter and a magruder 241 and i will be drinking eggnog tomorrow night believe it um Answer we're looking for on this. His name is Vladimir Lenin. Vladimir Lenin. All right, question three TV. After being introduced as a recurring character on another animated show, this high school girl from the town of Lawndale got her own self titled MTV show in 1997. For your wage, you can either name that animated character or name the show that this character first appeared on. Name both for a two point bonus. I got a hit.
right after being introduced as a recurring character on another animated show, this high school girl from the town of Lawndale got her own self-titled MTV show in 1997. For you, age, you can either name that animated character or name the show that the character first appeared. Two points for both of them. All right, bring it home, everyone. Bring it home. Answer is Daria. Two point bonus is Beavis and Butthead. There you are. Beavis and Butthead. All right, question number four is science. This 19th century German scientist did not actually invent the lab uh, burner, but instead made technological improvements on those that were already in wide usage. There you heard it from us. What was this scientist's last name? feel like we're trolling this scientist a little bit, but it is what it is. All right, in the class, it's science. This 19th century German scientist did not actually invent the laboratory burner, but instead made technological improvements on those that were already in wide usage. What's his last name? All right, lock it in, y'all. Science. This guy gets a lot of credit, but you heard it from us. We are saying he um he took some ideas from others. There you go. But he gets all the sugar. His name is Bunsen. Old Robert Bunsen of Bunsen Burner fame. I burned myself in one of those once. Yes, indeed. The organic chemistry class in college, UMBC. I might have been drinking the night before. I can't remember. Either way, though, the old Bunsen flame has a bite to it. Let's, let's just say that. Final question, literature. What 19th century literary work begins with the line, Christmas won't be Christmas without any presents, grumbled Joe, lying on the rug. Be wager, please give me the name of that literary work. Two points, name the author. Definitely accident prone, Deborah. Hey, Scotty Sharp, are you in the audience tonight? Once again, what 19th century literary work begins with the line? Christmas won't be Christmas without any presents, grumbled Joe, lying on the rug. Be wager, please give me the name of that literary work. Two points, 
Name the author. Fifteen seconds. All right, he locked this one in. The answer we're looking for, I believe they made a movie out of this recently, within the last few years, right? Uh, that is Little Women. And the bonus was Louisa May Alcott. There you go. That's the end of round number two. Appreciate you. We're going to go ahead and do these uh, picture round here in just a moment. Take a minute, though. Stretch your legs. Stretch your brain. Hey, Scotty Sharp. Deborah Bell won the um, uh, gift card. And she wants it to DRP, and she said that she will be there on Monday night. You will as well. So could wonder if you could grab her a – Deborah, hit, hit up Scott. We'll grab you a uh, DRP gift card on Monday night, and then Scott, I'll reimburse – I'll give, shoot you a 10 through PayPal. From Poor House. If that works for y'all. Look at me organizing on online stream. Makes sense because I saw both of y'all on there. I saw Scott and Deborah. And my brain said, you might as well just go ahead and knock that out. Hey, if y'all are interested in a private party, hit us up anytime. We do all sorts of pri uh, parties for friends, family. I know it's been a long year of not seeing our friends and family as much as we'd like. Uh, so if you want to get together uh, via the uh, old Zoom, we can put together a private party for you. Uh, of any sort. We can also do Family Feud, which is run through Zoom. Um, so yeah, hit us up. PoorHouseTrivia.com will put together something for you. The, the pricing is very fair um, and accessible for, for all types of organizations. All righty. That said, here is your trivia picture round. Team captains, your job is to identify the following films that were released in the fine year of 2020. Movie making greatness this year. And we got 10 greats. Your job is to identify them all. One point apiece. No wagering. They will scroll through. I wish you good luck. Have fun with it. And we'll see you in just uh, a few minutes.
All right, y'all, go ahead and lock in. Give me another minute or so. <laughs> 2020 was certainly was a fun year in the old movie making business, wasn't it? There are a couple good ones on there. I saw a couple of these. All right, everybody, here we go. We're going to go with the answers here. Lock your answers in one point apiece for all these correct. Um, There we are. They are bad boys for life. Sonic the Hedgehog. Call of the Wild. I've been meaning to watch that. It got good reviews in Rotten Tomatoes, right? Uh, I think. Wonder Woman 1984. The Invisible Man was good. I'm just going to say that. I saw I watched The Invisible Man one night on a whim, and it was good. Real good. I loved it, but I like those kind of movies. So nice to have a little midweek trivia to get ready to close out 2020. Thanks as always, Benny and Ian. We got six. The Way Back, Seventh Greyhound, Artemis Fowl is eight, Palm Springs is nine, and One Night in Miami is ten. Give yourself one point apiece. Input it into the answer sheet. Send us on in them scores, y'all. It's time to send in them scores. We're going to start up a raffle. Hey, tomorrow night's raffle. We're going to raffle off um, uh, one of these guys right here. I have one left. It's in-house, so I'll be mailing it to you personally. Um, so, yeah, these are custom-made. There's only three that exist in the universe. Um, so... Now, I can't honestly say that I know that for sure if there are parallel universes, but in the one that I know of, right, there's only been three created by me. And I have one, my dad has one, and the winner tomorrow night will have one. We'll probably do one, we'll maybe do two drawings tomorrow night, maybe three or four. I might just go crazy and do one each round or something um, since it's the last one of 2020, probably what we'll do. But anyways, the, one of these will definitely get raffled off tomorrow night. So tune in for our 2020 extravaganza tomorrow night 7 p.m eastern tonight go ahead and start your raffle by entering exclamation point raffle and then the number of raffle tickets you'd like to get there are five points a piece five uh poor house points a piece and if you want to know how many poor house points you have you type exclamation point points okay at the end of the game we'll do the drawing randomly um and the winner will get 10 bucks in uh poorhouse uh box to what am i trying to say here a gift card is what it's called to a, a poorhouse trivia venue of your choice if you don't live near one you can replace that with an amazon card um if you're a subscriber to our channel for every one raffle ticket you get you'll get three extra added in so you'll increase your chances of winning if you're a subscriber to the channel all right so we'll do that at the end uh, but yeah, go ahead and send on in your scores, y'all. We'll go ahead and uh, post them up right here where the blank space is now. What's up, Burks Fools Gold in the house tonight? Nice to have a little midweek trivia to get ready to close out 2020. Thanks, as always, Denny and Ian. You got it. You are very welcome. Thanks you as well, Burks Fools Gold. All year long, wonderful support. Appreciate you. Want to hear some good goals for 2021? I'm going to add more props into the stream. We're going to do all kinds of stuff. Honking and, and neck thing, pulling out. It should be fun. All right, y'all. We're going to go ahead and knock these categories out while y'all are sending the scores on into our good friend, Ian. We will post those scores up in just a moment. But in the meantime, go ahead and put these categories down. Newspaper comics. European geography. Over under. Let's talk musical organs and music group. Music groups. You're just using me for fun to take the wind and then we're done. I thought I meant a little more. Don't wanna play no more. Come on, boy.
This is that go-go jam. All right, y'all. We are going to go ahead and start up round number three. Kicking off now. As soon as those scores are in, I'll post them right here and we'll go over them. But good luck in round number three. The name of this title character is a pun that references a Valkyrie of Germanic mythology. In the comics, she is a 1,500-year-old witch with a ravenous appetite for men, beer, and cigars. Be would you please give me the name of that character? And for a two-point bonus, please give me the name of the man who created that character. The name of this title character is a pun that references a Valkyrie of Germanic mythology. In the comics, she's a 1,500-year-old witch with a ravenous appetite for men, beer, and cigars. If you wager, please give me the name of that character. And for a two-point bonus, please give me the name of the man who created that character. And you've got 20 seconds. All right, lock it in, y'all. Comic fans, here we go. The answer we are looking for is Broom Hilda. Broom Hilda is your answer. And the two point bonus for Broom Hilda is Russell Myers. Russell Myers. checking in real quick um ian are you here by chance i didn't see i'm looking i haven't seen the scores pop up yet just want to make sure i don't see ian in chat either um i wonder if he got dis disconnected or anything keep you posted all right, question number two is mountains. Oh, there he is. He just told me populated. Never mind, Ian. Disregard that. Featuring a three-kilometer-long three flat plateau, this flat-topped mountain has a fitting name and forms a prominent and notorious landmark that overlooks the city of Cape Town in South Africa. It is featured on the flag of Cape Town. Name it. Featuring a three kilometer long flat plateau, this flat top mountain has a fitting name and forms a prominent and notorious landmark that overlooks the city of Cape Town in South Africa. It is featured on the flag of Cape Town. Name it. That was incorrectly categorized. I agree. I'll explain it in a moment. <laughs> y'all are not shy when there's a blunder boy y'all are not shy when there's a blunder let a brother know when he messed up all 
All right, lock it in, yo. Lock it in. All right. It was not European geography. It originally was, but I changed the question lab earlier, and I forgot to change. I, I, I actually typically forget to change, like, the heading there. Mountains used to say. But this time, I forgot to change the daggone um, category heading. So, um, if... You know, here, I guess to be fair, if for chance you did choose this as your bonus, thinking it was European geography and you just are a boss at European geography, but then you found out it was about mountains in Africa and you uh, feel slighted, you can change your bonus now to question three, four, or five in this round. All right, so if you chose question two thinking it was European geography... I'll let you change it to three, four, or five. Seems fair, right? All right, good. Sorry for the blunder, but I know the jokes will ensue. <laughs> you, you, we are not indicating uh, that South Africa is in Europe by any chance. <laughs> All right. Question is Table Mountain. All right, the answer is Table Mountain. Question number three is over, under. If this is a three-part question, your answers will either be under or over. Number 15 is your secret number. Uh, you can guess at all three, and we'll learn your wager. If two are correct, you'll receive a two-point bonus if all three are correct. All right? Simply over or under with the number 15. Here we go. The atomic number of aluminum. Is that over or under 15? <laughs> number two, the NFL jersey number of Peyton Manning. Over or under 15. And number three, number one singles on the Billboard Hot 100 chart for Mariah Carey. Is that over or under 15. You need two for your wagger, three for two points. Go get them, Tigers. Once again, the atomic number of aluminum. Number two, the NFL jersey number of Peyton Manning. And number three, the number one singles on the Billboard Hot 100 chart from Mariah Carey. seconds lock it in <laughs> all right y'all lock it in we're gonna talk about it over or under number one that is under 13 number two that is over and that is 18 and number three is also over 19 so you got oh, under over over if you got two for your wager if you got all three click that plus two you're in business <laughs> all right question number four is organ 1934 a man named lawrence developed the first organ of its kind with no reeds no pipes and no vibrating parts be wager what was lauren's i'm sorry lauren's last name
1934, a man named Lawrence developed the first organ of its kind with no reeds, no pipes, and no vibrating parts. We wager what was Lauren's last name. Once again, in 1934, a man named Lawrence developed the first organ of its kind. No reeds, no pipes, and no vibrating parts. For you, wager, what was Lawrence's last name? 20 seconds. All right, lock it in, y'all. We're talking about organs. Uh, no reeds, no pipes, and no vibrating parts. That's how I like my organs. Hey, oh, there it is. It's called a Hammond, is what it's called. Hammond organ. That's where you got that. That's question number four. And here's question number five. Uh, in music, respectively hailing from the United Kingdom and France, name either one of the two most recent European music groups to win the Grammy Award for Album of the Year. You can guess it both, and you'll get your wagger if either's correct. And if you get both, you know what happens. Once again, respectively hailing from the United Kingdom and France, name either one of the two most recent European music groups to win the Grammy Award for Album of the Year. Either for your wage, two points for both. 19 seconds. All right, y'all, lock this in. We're talking music. The answer we are looking for is Mumford and & Sons and Daft Punk. There you are, Mumford & Sons, Daft Punk. If you got either of those, you're good. If you got two points, you're real good. Click it. That brings us to the end of round number three. A couple of you have asked. Yes, we are doing trivia tomorrow night on New Year's Eve, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Tune on in. It will be all 2020 themed. Get this 2020 business out. <laughs> 7 p.m. Eastern. I'll be here with Eggnog. I'm not much of a champagne drinker, so don't judge. I just like my eggnog. And I still got half a jug of that business upstairs. We're going to dip up in it tomorrow with some Baileys, too. Woo! 
No telling what the resolutions might be at the end of that game, baby. If you got nothing to do, stop on in 7 p.m. Eastern. And if you have something to do, well, tune in on your phone. All right, we're going to start with a 642 question right now. You know how it works. And if you don't, here's how it works. Take a pause from wagering. You don't wager on this question. Your wager is based on when you answer. There's a six-point clue that is staggeringly difficult. Four-point clue is mind-numbingly medium. And the three point, no, the two point clue is embarrassingly easy peasy lemon squeezy. You can only guess a one though. So if you guess it six and whiff, can't guess again. Six point clue, you got 30 seconds. I'm an American actor born in 1931. I won a Tony Award in 1969 for my performance in The Great White Hope and was nominated for an Oscar in the subsequent film adaptation if you want to go for it now for a six point hit you can do that in the next 28 seconds good luck <laughs> Crixie says the reward for winning tomorrow's raffle is, is assigning Denny a resolution. I'll take that. I'm still down with the Floby resolution for me and Ian. What do you think, Ian? Buy the little book? And a Floby, baby. <laughs> Are y'all locking that six-point clue if you want to go for it? All right, here we go. Four-point clues coming in one. In two. Four-point clue coming in. On the first installment of The Treehouse of Horror on The Simpsons, my voice can be heard on each of the three segments, including the narration of the retelling of Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven. All right, last call for four points. If you want to go for it, you got about five seconds. Two. Two-point clue coming in. I am best known for portraying the voice of Star Wars villain. Lock it in, y'all. I think you know it by now, right? Who got it on the six? It looks like Kirk, Beth, Mike. No, Mike Heisting. Uh, the Goat Mon. Hold it. Sniped it. Sniped it on the six. That is James Earl Jones. Oh, J-E-G's in the house, James Earl Jones. I'm your Funny, I can do a James Earl Jones impression and an Elmo one. <laughs> I like. I'm gonna do both of those one night. Elmo, may I read you a story? <laughs> Elmo like when James Earl Jones reads stories. <laughs> I have lost my mind. 
Round four categories, world leaders, geometry class, 2020 in TV, business name origins, and college basketball. Let me take a look at these real quick because I did make some changes. Actually, I'm going to double check because I did make some changes and I don't want to, um, uh, if I forgot to change the category names in any of these, give me one second. In the meantime, all right. All right, we're good. We're good. We're solid. Yeah, it was just last round. It's just that one. <laughs> Brian, you remember that? Watto brought Brian says Denny does a good water impression too. That's right. Booba and get it with a chance cube. I got a chance cube. I think Sabulba might be my favorite character, or Watto might be my favorite character. Yes, Watto from Sabulba for with a chance cube. All right, y'all. Before I lose my mind, totally world leaders kicks it off. Here we go. In a speech delivered on August 20, 1940, what world leader said, never in the field of human conflict was so much owed by so many to so few. Two points bonus. What specific World War II campaign was the inspiration for that speech? Yes. His mother. In a speech delivered August 20, 1940, what world leader said never in the field of human conflict was so much owed by so few to so many? Two point bonus. What specific World War II campaign was the inspiration for this speech? All right, y'all. Who was it? Who said it? Uh, the answer is go. That his name is Winston Churchill. Oh, Winnie Church. Two point bonus was the Battle of Britain. There you are. Geometry. You would be awfully nice to tell me the term used to describe two geometric angles. Is combined measurements equal 90 degrees. Give me the name of that term.
Once again, you would be awfully nice to tell me the term used to describe two geometric angles whose combined measurement equal 90 degrees. Be wage to name that term. All right, your answer, uh, geometry fans. That's known as a complementary angle. Complementary angle. All right, moving on to question number three in TV. This is a three-part question. Answer the following about TV shows that won Emmys in 2020. Two for you wager, all three for two points. And here we go. Hey, yo, what is up, beer winners? Thank you very much, y'all. Appreciate you. Happy New Year. They say here's some more trivia in 2021. I will drink to that, y'all. All right, here you go. Uh, this Canadian TV show took home the Emmy for Outstanding Comedy Series. Number two, this VH1 show won the Emmy for Outstanding Competition Program. And number three, two Marvel stars won Emmys for Outstanding Lead Actress and Lead Actor in a drama series. Name them both. Once again, Canadian TV show took home the Emmy for Outstanding Comedy Series. Number two, this VH1 show won the Emmy Award for Outstanding Competition Program. And finally, two Marvel stars won Emmys for Outstanding Lead Actress and Lead Actor in a Drama Series. Name them both. All right, y'all, the answer we are looking for. Need two free wage draw, three for two points. Uh, number one is Shit's Creek. Shit's Creek. Number two, the competition program. That is RuPaul's Drag Race. And number three, that is Mark Ruffalo and Zendaya. What's up, MT? They say... Drinking wine and playing trivia live from Wisconsin. Thank you so much to MT. Maybe we'll get you a chance cube. Sorry, I don't know where that came from. We had, um, we got our stream, uh, stream interrupted there for a second. Not sure what happened. But anyways, uh, here we go. Name origins is question number four. After initially planning on naming their business Piquat. After the ship from Moby Dick, the owners of what company instead took the name of Pequod's first mate? <laughs> it's better than maggot cheese, Ian. Come on. Brooksy, I do do Gollum. I haven't done Gollum in a while, so I'd have to hear his voice for a minute just to, to refresh it. Maybe tomorrow night. 
We'll bring Gollum in. We'll have a party. Watto, Gollum, Yoda, Kermit, Elmo, James Earl Jones. After initially planning on naming their business Pequod, after the ship from Moby Dick, the owners of what company instead took the name of Pequod's first mate? 20 seconds. All right, y'all, here we go. The answer, I wouldn't call my company Pequod either. Starbucks is what it is. Starbucks. <laughs> All right, y'all, final question round number four is basketball. Uh, the only team to score 100 points in the NCAA one me Division I Men's Basketball Championship game was what school? that trounced Duke by 30 points to win its only title in school history. Two-point bonus. Give me the name of that team's head coach during that championship winning season. Once again, the only team to score 100 points in the NCAA Division I men's basketball championship game was what school that trounced Duke by 30 points to win its only title in school history? Two points bonus. Give me the name of that team's head coach during that championship winning season. I lock it in. All right, here is your answer to basketball. It is UNLV. UNLV is your answer. Two point bonus is Jerry Tarkanian and his towel eating antics. He was an animated dude, that is for sure. Nice job if you got Jerry Tarkanian and UNLV. There you go. That is the end of round four, y'all. Go ahead and send your scores on in pre final. We'll populate the leaderboard right there. See who wins this thing tonight.
this hair cut into new shoes. We're here all night like we got nothing to lose. I'm coming out the jacket cause we're turning up the heat. I wanna see you clapping when you get up out your seat. It's time to make it happen when we hit these streets. I'm coming in hot and I can't be beat. Watch out now. Baby, watch out now. Watch out. Hey, what's up, Flu Fighters? Thanks for making 2020 bearable. Absolutely. And likewise, we appreciate you. Jackie, yeah, I like this. This whole station's awesome. It's kind of a funk channel. Hey, uh, quick note, everybody on. Um, let me see something real quick. I'm going to go dark on the screen real quick. Looks like I got a note from um, the crew. And we had put drama where it should have said limited. Uh, so let me see real quick. Um, okay, so yeah, what we're, the way we're going to rule that third one, two Marvel stars, one Emmys for outstanding lead actress and lead actor in a drama series, name them both. Um... If you put Ruffalo because of it, you can have credit due to our blunder. There we go. Let me get this back. What's up, Moby? <laughs> I like it. Moby Sharp, Nick. Scott Sharp, I don't think you get to have the pleasure of seeing all the creative um, plays on your name that uh, the Sharpnik crew uh, gets to, puts up every night. So Moby Sharpnik, think I just pulled a Pequod muscle. I hate when that happens. Uh, and LP, what's up? Says Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year back to you. Thank you so much. Ian's correcting in chat. If you didn't put Ruffalo, maybe I should have said that. If you did not put Ruffalo, you can have credit due to our wording um, of limited and whatnot. Winner tonight. <laughs> well, we might as well make it a twenty dollar gift certificate. It looks like Deborah sniped it again. So Scott will do Deborah. We're gonna do a twenty dollar card this Monday to DRP instead of a ten. Congratulations, Deborah. I think that's our first back to back. <laughs> All right, y'all, go ahead and submit your scores on in. Deborah is the raffle champion. That's right. If you if, if they show up Monday, you'll have twenty dollar gift card. You can buy them all drinks. No, it's not the third back to back. Oh, oh, it's my third back to back. The poor house is third back to back. I thought you meant it's Deborah's third back to back. I don't think, yeah. Yeah, looks like we've had a couple in the past. Zachary. All right, here is your.
So I was looking up all the uh, the winners here. All right, I'm gonna pick another winner. We're gonna do two tonight, just uh, just cause feeling generous. So your second, this is not gonna show up through Streamlabs because I already the way they have it working. If you once you wrap up one giveaway, it you can't. So when I pick the winner, it's just gonna get typed in. There we go. Let me see if I got this right. Uh, second winner is in the chat. It is Anne Leadkey. There you go, Anne and Deborah. If that's cool, if we do the 20 at DRP, that's cool with you. And then Anne, you can hit me up at the email. I'll type that. There you go, y'all. <laughs> All right. So, um, yes. What's up, Killer Snails? Francis, Happy New Year. PHT, Happy New Year to you as well. And thank you for your support. Also, save the clock tower. Enjoy the eggnog tomorrow. Appreciate it, y'all. All right. Your final category after these scores look like this. Um, we have... Uh, three tacos and a burrito, hippies and honeys, Trebek for trivia. Uh, those are 149s. Trebek for trivia, 150 with AAA towing. Blind squirrels. That's so Clavin at 151 with half a team, Neil's boring. Crazy trains at 152 with killer snails and a dingo ate your baby. 153s southbound. We are number two in South Paul Fish. The bars at 154 with the mighty Quins. The duck dodgers in the 24 and a half centuries, 155. So like butt acid issues. 156 and tied for first things you measure title one forever your final category should you choose to accept it is world capitals and by that we do not mean mountains in africa love you pick your category if you get your wager right you earn the points if you get it wrong you lose points. Your maximum wager is 12. Your minimum is zero. You can see it on the bottom of the answer sheet. Lock it in in 20 seconds. We will rock and roll with a hoochie coo. All right, y'all, lock it in. Here is your final question. I wish everybody good luck. It goes a little something like this. Well, the current population of about four and a half million people, what Asian city is the most populous national capital whose common English name begins and ends with the same letter? Good luck. Oh, there's my jam. Once again, with a current population of about four and a half million people, what Asian city is the most populous national capital among English names whose common English names begin and end with the same letter? 24 seconds, y'all.
I wasn't winning at all, I was just further behind. You played your hand, you showed my cards. I took my top rods from your heart. I laid them down before your eyes. Game over, blow the whistle, we're out of time. <laughs> all right, y'all, lock it in. The answer is coming at you. World Capitals. Four and a half milli, Asian city. Starts and ends with the same letter. That letter is A as in audacity. It is Ankara, Turkey is your answer. Ankara, Turkey. Nice job. If you got that right, go ahead and submit that score on in to us. We'll populate the leaderboard, see who wins tonight. You will get to pick a category for Tuesday night's game, not tomorrow night's because we have the set all structured for 2020 stuff. Um, but you will get to pick a category for Tuesday night's game. Go ahead and send those scores if we have a tie. We'll do a quick tiebreaker. And if you are hanging out for the score revelations, awesome. If not, you're taking off. Well, I, I really appreciate you tuning in. On behalf of all of us here at Poor House Trivia Online, we appreciate you and letting us uh, hang with you tonight. So have a wonderful rest of your Wednesday if you're taking off right now. Maybe we'll see you tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Eastern, for the final 2020 game. I'm going to write me a quick tiebreaker just in case we need it real quick. Based on something I noticed tonight. Didn't know I could do it. All right, y'all go ahead and send those on in. So I called, I don't know if any, but while we're waiting on the scores, so I called uh, that veterinary hospital today about those pipettes and those that lab equipment that I got randomly. I don't know if anybody heard that story, but uh, I had about four Amazon boxes out front of my, my yard. Um, so this was right before Christmas. So I just tore through them, you know, pulled them out and was stacking presents up. And um, one of them was a box of, let, they, they misdelivered. This is a veterinary hospital like across town. It's not even close to me. But it's like lab equipment and pipettes and stuff. <laughs> I was wondering who got my kid like a, a science kit. It wasn't even a good science kit. Like it was just it was weird. So I called them today and they told me to keep it. They told me Merry Christmas. Um, that's what they told me. I said, you want me to bring it to you? They said, no, you can hold on to it. We'll just get new ones. Merry Christmas. Give it to your kid. Because I told them I made it to told them it was funny. I said it was. I said, I thought it was a, you know, a science kit. And they said, no. And I'm thinking, really? Really? Just Merry Christmas. Thank you. You can keep those 500 pipettes and, and test tubes. Thank you. Appreciate that. So maybe I'll raffle those off tomorrow, too. Maybe we'll have tomorrow night. Deborah Bell, you will be the proud new owner 
of uh, 500 veterinary pipettes and a stack of test tubes, 500 milliliters. There you go, Deborah Bell. All right, y'all, here are your scores. Deborah in lieu of $20 from DRP on Monday. I'll have Scott um, uh, with, a, with a box full of pipettes and test tubes for you. Uh, geared up for veterinary usage. <laughs> All right, y'all. Here's your final tw top 20. Second to last game in 2020. Here you go. Three tacos and a burrito. Triple A towing. Blind squirrels. Half a team. That's so Clavin. Smartini's team coast to coast. Neil's boring. Crazy train. Killer snails. A dingo at your baby. Top nine tonight. We are number two. Southbound. South Paul Fish. The bar, the mighty Quinns, Duck Dodgers in the 24 and a half century. So like butt acid issues and third tied for first things you measure title one forever. We are going to go ahead and knock out a tiebreaker. But first, if you're on your way out, a reminder tomorrow night, last game of 2020, tune on back in, grab the crew. We will wrap up 2020 with one final 2020 themed craziness. All right, bring your own champagne. I'll bring my own eggnog, and we'll see you there. Um, this tiebreaker is between things you measure and Title One Forever. I chose a user at random tonight, and the user was Freezer. How many Poor House Trivia online hours has user Freezer logged in 2020? This is to one decimal place. It's between things you measure and Title One Forever, and you cannot type anything in chat to obtain, like, the hour logs or whatever. I know that there's like a top 10 for points and stuff. I think you can do it for hours too, but don't do it because we're waiting to see what the top two teams think. All right, so things you measure in Title One Forever. Go ahead and type your answer. You got about 20 seconds, please. Pop it in there in 20 seconds. Let me see if I got that. Nah, it's in the back. There's those, those old stinky back there. Watch. Stink! Hey, Jenks, come here. What are you going to do? Hey! Hey! You out, man? Really? Oh, that's another 2021 rev resolution is to definitely get a uh, Jinx cam. We're going to need a Jinx cam. All right, y'all, go ahead and give us your... Uh, Freezer says, even I don't know the answer to that one. Freezer, I'll let you take a guess as well. Just to see if free, how, how close Freezer is to his own or her own hours. All right, y'all, go ahead and type that answer in. We need the answers now, please, to one decimal place. Deborah says, I want a chance to win, a uh, chance to meet Jinx. <laughs> we can do that in 2020. Maybe get maybe get Jinx's own Twitter. No matter what people want you to believe. Jinx, the trivia master of 2020. All right, things you measure say 85.3. Title One Forever says 82.69. Freezer guesses. <laughs> Freezer guesses 1,500 hours. That's a lot of hours. The answer is 26.5 hours your winners tonight is title one forever 
Congratulations, y'all. Go ahead and pick a category for next Tuesday night's game. Title one forever. You get to pick it. And tomorrow night, we will do 2020 craziness. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button on the way out, y'all. Totally free. Jingle the bell. Receive notifications. Make sure they're on so you'll never miss a thing we do. All right. 1,500 hours. <laughs> That's funny. I like it. Title One Forever has chosen as their category, Things You Measure. <laughs> I like it. I like it a lot. That'll be Tuesday night's category. That'll be the first category. We'll open, hopefully. That'll be the first category of 2021. That is uh, indicative of how we will start our year. Things you measure. We'll kick off the first Poor House Trivia Online game of 2021. All right, y'all. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your Wednesday night. Please consider tuning in with us tomorrow night, uh, 7 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, we'll have our final game of 2020. And, um, yeah, we'll bid a fond farewell together to this wonderful year we've all experienced together on Tuesdays through Thursdays. All right. I can't wait. Looking forward to it. So, uh, yes, have a great night. Lots of love to you. Appreciate you. Um, and we'll see you tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Eastern for the last one of 2020.